So let's begin our discussion on inclined planes, also known as ramps or simply inclines. So let's suppose I have the following object, a box that is sliding down our frictionless inclined plane. Now, what exactly is creating the motion? What is allowing, forcing the box to slide down our inclined plane? Well, the answer is gravity. Gravity acts perpendicular to the surface on which our inclined plane is on. But notice, even though it's perpendicular to the surface on which the inclined plane is on, the actual force vector that pulls down on the box is parallel to the surface of our inclined plane. So once again, objects sliding down frictionless inclined planes are accelerating due to gravity, yet the actual acceleration vector is not exactly vertical. It's parallel to the surface of our inclined plane. Now, whenever we're solving dynamics problems that involve inclined planes, we choose the x-axis to run along the surface of our inclined plane, and we choose the y-component, the y-axis, to run perpendicular to the surface of our inclined plane. Now, notice that the normal force, in, in other words, the force that our inclined plane exerts on the box is perpendicular to the surface of our inclined plane. So, let's redraw the following diagram below and let's figure out what the magnitude is of this vector of the force that actually pulls on our box, that pulls it downward. And let's figure out what the magnitude of the normal force is. So, here we draw the green vector, which represents the force, the magnitude and direction of the force that gravity exerts that points along our x-axis. And this corresponds to the magnitude of the normal force. So let's suppose that the theta, the angle of the inclined plane with respect to our ground is given by theta. Now theta here is the same thing as theta between these two vectors. So let's take this vector and place it down here so we can draw the following triangle. So this theta is the same theta here. This hypotenuse of the triangle is our magnitude of the force due to gravity. This blue arrow represents the vector or the magnitude of the y component, the force normal. And this x represents the magnitude of our vector that actually pulls down on our object, that points along the x-axis along the surface of our inclined plane. So we can use the sine and cosine trigonometric functions to find what the magnitude of x and y is. So recall that sine of the angle theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So if we rearrange that equation, we get that the magnitude of force pulling on the object along our inclined plane is equal to sine of the angle theta multiplied by the magnitude of our gravitational force, Fg. Now, Fg is simply mass of the object times acceleration due to gravity. So this is Fg here. It's mass times g. So we replace Fg with mg, and we get that m times g times sine theta is the magnitude of this force that pulls down on the object. Likewise, we can use the cosine trigonometric function to find the magnitude of the normal force. So the magnitude of the normal force is given by cosine of the angle multiplied by Fg, which is mg times cosine theta. Now, notice that this has the same magnitude as our normal force, but it points in the opposite direction. So we have to keep that in mind. Now, what is the acceleration? So we know that this is the force due to gravity that pulls down on our object, but what is our acceleration? So our acceleration is actually g times sine theta. This is our acceleration. It's slightly less than our g. 
So let's look at the following example in which we're going to use these two formulas. A box with a mass of 20 kilograms is sliding down a frictionless plane with an angle of 30 degrees with respect to our ground. So in part A we want to find the acceleration vector and in part B we want to determine the normal force that our inclined plane exerts on our box. So we're making the assumption that our angle here is 30 degrees and we want to determine the magnitude of our acceleration. So we said earlier that our magnitude of acceleration is g times sine theta and it points all along the x-axis along our horizontal inclined plane. So sine of the angle theta multiplied by g, so sine theta sine 30 is 0 0.5 multiplied by 9.8 gives us 4.9 meters per second squared. So our magnitude of acceleration pointing along our surface of the inclined plane is half of our g. What about part b? Determine the normal force. Well, the normal force has the same exact magnitude as this force, which we found in 2. So we simply take cosine of the angle 30 multiplied by m times g, multiplied by 20 kilograms, times 9.8 meters per second squared. And we get a normal force of 170 newtons. So that means our inclined plane exerts a force of 170 newtons on our box and the direction is directly perpendicular along our y-axis, perpendicular to the surface of our inclined plane.